welcome to Perth's local business doctor show. My name is Lorraine of District 32 and we've partnered with West TV and Wanneroo Business Association to bring Perth a really great viewing business doctor television series. So what's it all about? What are we doing here? We thought it would be a really great idea to share the insights and the secrets of success for all the small business owners in Perth. We've got some business doctors who are going to share their words of wisdom for some of the small businesses here in Perth. So today we are in the beautiful North Coogee, there couldn't be a better place in Perth and we're going to meet our first business for today, Bira Enzer of Grazi Gifts. Let's go and meet her. I'm just going to show you quickly how to um, how I make the hampers up. So I've got the basket, um, putting in, usually people like a bottle of wine and they like some kind of food products to go into the hamper. So I've got a few bits and pieces to pop in. So I've got some um, hot chilli sauce, I've got some nougat and I'm going to put some um, uh, Italian meringues in it as well. So these just act as a bit of a filler. So once it's shrink wrapped, which makes it a lot easier now, um, then I'll just put the ribbon on. With a gift, you don't really want to be making it a uh, completely branded item. With a gift, you're just saying, great to have known you and thank you for your support. Well, Vera, that was a really nice overview of your business. This is fantastic. It's really great to see where it all happens. Right? This is it. This is where it all happens. I'd really like to get a little bit deeper into how you got started, what you're looking to achieve, so that we can get into the nitty gritty for the show. Tell me, how did you get started? What is behind the Grazi brand? Well, behind Grazi, it really evolved from where I used to work in the liquor industry. I used to do um, selling in wines and in spirits, and I had also um, been quite fortunate to be a state manager and also be involved in a number of marketing campaigns with brands. Well, that's fantastic. But what are your goals? What are you looking to achieve with the brand? What are your plans for the next one, two, three, five years? What, what's the dream for Grazi Gifts? Well, I've had a, um, a bit of time to think about this. And what I'd like to do is really focus on a specific area in the gift hamper business and looking at personalised gifts, handover gifts, and trying to ensure that when people receive a gift, it's actually coming from a Grazi person to give you that extra personal contact. Yeah. Okay, so that's around the product, the service delivery, mm. how you want to present yourself to the market. But what about, have you thought about with regards to people, to personnel, to financial revenue? Do you want to double your turnover? Do you want to create a retirement plan? Mm. Do you want, is it a lifestyle business? Are you hoping to sell the business? You know, what, what are your goals? I'd like to increase the business with revenue okay. every year by about 15%. Okay. I'm not out That's to... A nice, it's a nice achievable mm. uh, target. Yes. And it's not, I'm not out to make a million bucks or, you know, in a year or anything like that because I really want to keep pace of the business. I want the business to keep pace of with the people I have with me. I don't want them to be overworked. Um, I don't want to be overworked myself and I don't want to lose that enjoyment of making the hampers. Thank you for welcoming us as into your um, home today. We've had a really great introduction to your business. We've seen your storeroom, we've seen how you wrap all the gifts and stuff. How long have you been going? The business has been going for about six years on a part-time basis, but now I've invested a lot of money into it, so I would say it's been going full on for about three and a half years. So three and a half years then, and you're at your, you know, your, your storeroom is at the back of your house here, um, and you've said to us earlier that you'd like to grow your business by about 15% each year and maintain that growth. Do you think being in the home, and how long is that going to sustain you, or do you think you can grow your business to what you want 
but still being in this environment? I think initially I'd like to try and maintain the growth and keep it in the home only because it keeps the overheads down yeah, and I think with the cost of products that go into the hampers quite often they can be quite high so I need to try and keep as much costing as low as possible. The main problems then are the maintaining the customer contract mm. contact where you grow the business um, obtaining repeat business from mm. those who are wandering a little. That's Is there anything else? And probably marketing. It's such oh. a it's a you know, beautiful thing. Ah, I mean, there's so much involved in marketing and yeah. how, and the budget's always quite limited. So I suppose to find the most cost effective way on how to market my business to the clients that I'm um, targeting. What have you done up to now? How are you getting your business now? A lot of it is through networking, okay. through word of mouth. Uh, I'm not in a position to go networking, breakfast, lunch and dinner, seven, you know, six, seven days a week. So it's, I need to look at other avenues as to how to create the business to come through. Do you have any referral programs in place at the minute? I don't have a referral program okay. um, in place and I'm not quite sure how to do that. Okay, well I guess that would be another area of advice that the business doctors can help you with. Mm. So let's just recap then before we meet the business doctors. It's how do you grow your business while maintaining that really important face-to-face -face contact? How do you make sure that the wanderers or the 50% of your client base are repeat customers? And also what's worked for the business doctors in respect of marketing and what hasn't and what's best for your business and with your budget? Be right. That sounds fabulous, yes, that's Beautiful. the three main points. Well, I'm sure they'll be able to give you lots and lots of advice on those points. Shall we meet them? Absolutely. Let's go. As I was listening to them, I was thinking, I wonder what the true vision is, and has the maths been done? What's the margin? And what's the philosophy behind the business? Because if you want to deliver each one of the baskets, then how will you grow? What would that mean in terms of 15% every year? How many deliveries will that be per day? Has those maths been done to really understand what that would mean to, to do every delivery every day at a 15% growth over year on year on year? So has the, just the basic maths been done? Well, looking at her problems and, and that she wants to have that 15% growth and keeping that personal contact, I think the budget has to be done. They need to sort of test whether that is possible and whether Vera herself is able to still provide that, um, provide that personalised service. I imagine that there is a lot of work that happens behind the scenes and that maybe somebody could be brought in to do that work, so the preparation, the ordering and all of that, yeah. allowing Vera to keep that client contact. Good idea. But the other thing I thought about was she has 50% repeat, which is pretty good, mm -hmm. but I'm wondering whether the 15% growth, the easiest way to get that may be from existing clients. Yeah. One of the things that's definitely um, struck me as being important for Vera is, is the really strong client contact and building those relationships. And um, unlike a lot of other um, gift providers that I see out there, uh, it might be a bit of a personal touch for the person ordering and there might be a good relationship there, repeat business, etc. Um, but then mostly it's just a delivery van going out and dumping it on the doorstep or delivering it to work. And there isn't that real personal touch with the end client, whereas that's what Vera actually does. And it's I think that's a difference. huge point of difference for yeah. her, which will uh, make her business uh, very attractive to the small medium enterprise that she's trying to attract um, on a regular basis. The challenge there is, of course, um, how does she not run herself into the ground as she grows, maintaining that um, continual service. So you're right, we need some support um, and for her as well she needs to make sure that the ideas that she's got in her head at the moment are properly mapped out so that when she does bring on somebody they understand how the process flows really well. What happens if someone from Geraldton says they want a gift basket? Are you telling me that she's going to get in the car and there's 15% growth oh, year oh, on year? Guys. I don't see where the philosophy is that makes it a scalable business. Personal driving to every. What happens if you're late and they're not there? She is only after 15 percent. Yeah, I was going to say that too. It's not much growth. She's really. not looking for doubling. The no, Geraldton doubling. market then. Geraldton, Albany, Bunbury out. Yeah, but so you could just put that on your website, couldn't you? We only deliver to, you know, like metro like area control. within 20 k's of GPO or yeah. whatever the criteria is. So the drive isn't money then? 
We don't know yet. Well, well I think it comes back to my original, why are you doing this? I just see something that's not quite right in terms of the philosophy. So I want to know what the business absolutely looks like in two years' time. Will there be a team of people? Are you open to that? What's the maths look like? Is this a doable business?